Hello dear ones, it's Alice, I'm of the stars, and I've been looking lately into uh, the reason for the existence of soulless people, and I'll be coming out with that information pretty soon. I have a little more research to do amongst the occult uh, literature that I found. Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to say a kind of a parable about it. Uh, there are people in the world today who have human form but no souls for a variety, variety of reasons. And, um, and most people in the world are confined in their notions of humankind to the human form. So if they see a human form, they think that they're seeing a human being, right? But, but human beings are not just human form. They're not just physical form. We, we are many different forms all combined and condensed into what we see as the physical reality. And beyond all that, encircling all that and encompassing it is the eternal soul in the normal human being. So you see me and I see you and we, what we see is just one tiny portion of what we really are, right? But in the case of a person who has lost his or her soul, then what you see is almost all that there is. You will probably see the physical form and with that maybe the damaged emotional body or astral form. So, uh, so here's the thing. What would it be like to be like in alliance with a person who has, has no soul? what they call uh, the dark soul, the black soul, like that. Um, imagine that you live in a house, your house, and you never leave it, right? And in that house, you've taken as a pet or as, as a friend a wild cat that was raised in the wild, right? Um, and that wild cat has, doesn't recognize you as family, okay? It, it, the only thing it knows is that you're potential prey, right? Kind of large, but potential prey. So you have to figure out a way, without leaving your home, you have to figure out a way to get along all the time with this wild cat and avoid having it uh, injure your physical form or kill you, right? So imagine that you only live in one room in the house, right? and you have no barriers and that cat is always there ready to tear into you how are you going to train it how are you going to train that physical form of the wild cat and tame its instincts so that it doesn't injure you okay so that's what happens to us when we align with a group that's headed by a person with no soul right so so we have to, in order to escape and, and, and be safe, we have to uh, disalign ourselves from that group. We have to step out of that group and step into only our own electromagnetic field. There we can be safe. But as long as we have those astral bonds, especially in the gut brain, between our gut brain and that of a person who has no soul, our own soul is always in danger. We are always in danger of losing our own soul. You know how the popular saying goes about being careful about the companions you keep, okay? This is an extreme instance of that. What the Bible, for instance, is talking about when it talks about bad companions and like that, they're, they're just talking about bad habits, like maybe debauchery, like that. But, but what it means when, you're, when your companion, and especially the person that you look up to in your group, is a soulless man or a soulless woman, is that you yourself are in danger of losing your own eternal soul. And as the Bible says, what does it avail us if our soul is lost, what is it that we gain? What do we have from all these countless, priceless incarnations? What is gained?